Let's talk about business models and income generation in the creative and cultural industries. Well, first of all, um, especially in the creative industries, there's the pure commercial model. Very simple, like many other standard businesses, in the sense that they derive income from selling things or services to their clients. It's simply that um, commercial transaction. They earn money from sales and they pay their expenses, make a profit, etc. So there's plenty of that in the creative industries, um, whether it's small businesses or bigger ones. And you know we, we should acknowledge that. And it's a relatively simple business model, um, very easy to understand, nothing particularly complex about it. It's the standard commercial model. But I think what's interesting also in the creative industries and especially in the sort of cultural end of creative industries and where creative industries overlaps with social enterprise and arts organisations and not-for-profit institutions, um, including you know, government or non-governmental organisations, is that we have a, a mixed economy or a business model that derives income from various different sources. And this is very interesting. And here I'm talking about perhaps, for example, a theatre that will derive income from straightforward sales of tickets. So that's pretty much a, a commercial transaction with the, the audience. But then they might also get some kind of grant from a government or non-governmental body um, because of their work in the arts, promoting theatre, um, reaching new audiences, etc. So that might be some kind of Arts Council grant. And then they might also um, receive sponsorship from a commercial organisation that wants their brand to be associated with the work of the theatre. Um, then they might also have donations from uh, you know, an association called the Friends of the, of the Theatre that might raise funds or simply make donations. And they have subscriptions, which is combined with ticket sales, but people who, who derive a little bit extra benefit than simply buying tickets. And so um, even a relatively small regional theatre, in the way I've described, can have a very complex mix of income. And that's good in many, many ways, um, but it is complicated. It means that we have to regard all these other people who are giving money or somehow adding to the income generation as stakeholders. Straightforward customers, of course, need to be regarded like customers to be treated with respect um, you know, to, as you take the money off them. But then when it comes to sponsors, sponsors are looking for something a bit different than the audiences. And so we need to be able to speak with the sponsors in their terms and explain the benefits to them of sponsorship to our theatre. So we have a different audience, a different constituency there. And then similarly when it comes to say the Arts Council funding, th that might be particularly about reaching new audiences. So they're not going to be satisfied simply that we uh, put on you know, high quality theatre and that we sell tickets and we pay the bills but are we reaching the right audiences? So we have, that's part of the, the mix within the mission of this cultural organisation, this theatre, but it's also um, a way of deriving income for a particular purpose. So they need to be very mindful of that. They will have to report on the successes in that direction. And you know, they will have to have perhaps a different marketing campaign to, to reach those new audiences than regular theatre goers. So everything becomes much more multi-layered and complex. And I think that's exciting, but we must acknowledge that it's, it's more complicated. It's not a straightforward commercial model. And then you know, we might also um, go for fundraising campaigns for particular projects or particular uh, initiatives within the broader work of the theater. It might also connect with the local education authority if there is an educational element in the theatre and connecting with schools, maybe doing outreach work and educational work in schools, but also you know, targeting um, schools and students to attend the theatre. 
So again, these are potential ways to derive new income, but every one is a separate business in the sense that there's an extra, di um, an extra amount of work involved and the, the messages and the communication has to be aligned to the agendas of all these different um, people out there. And then, you know, the, the other thing to look at when we talk about business models and income generation are the new opportunities that have arisen in recent years through things like crowdfunding. Now, crowdfunding actually isn't a new idea, but digital crowdfunding on a worldwide basis using the, the platforms we know, such as Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and many others. Now, that is relatively new, and many arts organizations have um, sort of used it to, um, to raise funds for a particular arts project. Businesses in the creative industries have used it. So if they've designed a new product or some clothing um, or gadget or electronics or even software or an app, they will you know, use crowdfunding to get that initial investment, often in terms of simply um, advanced sales, which gives them the reassurance that they know they've got you know, guaranteed sales uh, on production. Um, they offer benefits and you, you know how crowdfunding works. There are all kinds of perks and different levels at which people can buy into, as it were, or support financially a new project. And so in the creative industries and cultural industries, uh, I think crowdfunding online, electronically, you know, globally, through these platforms is a fantastic opportunity. And I've worked directly with businesses that have used it. Um, sometimes it's not as easy as it seems. Sometimes they have to have a second attempt. But you know, whether it's uh, people publishing a new magazine or um, young people making a feature film, I've seen lots of examples of uh, how the crowdfunding concept and practices can be used successfully to raise income from a new direction, from you know, new customers, from uh, pioneering customers who want to try something new. So it's, the business model is a combination of sponsorship, donations, and sales. And these can be combined in different ways through crowdfunding. And so again, it can be a bit more complex than it first might seem. But I think we should revel in this uh, complexity and be aware of the different business models, the different ways that we can generate income for creative businesses and organizations.